Hello everyone and welcome to the Plug in India channel. We are here today to report on something that is very dear to our hearts. That is the major disruption in the Indian two-wheeler market, Ola Electric. And this video happens to be in the form of a feedback and to convey community sentiment to the management and the top level at Ola. The test rides of Ola Electric have begun and they said that they would go to even small cities. We at Plug in India were absolutely not confident that they would be able to do that, but they are doing it. If you go to blog.olaelectric.com, you will see between the 4th to the 31st of December, there will be test rides in more than 100 small towns in Uttarakhand, Rajasthan, Meghalaya, Assam, Jammu and Kashmir. Amazing! I honestly thought this was an impossible job, but they are pulling it off. EVs have to be made available all over India and we are glad Ola is making this happen. So we have seen many videos from test ride reviewers, pollution vehicle media and very large YouTube channels. We were expecting the same with Ola, but the Ola electric marketing team is very clever. All the videos from pollution vehicle media were supposed to be out on the 11th of November, which is what everybody was waiting for. But then they pushed the embargo date back to the 15th of November and for four whole days, all you could see on Twitter, Instagram, all of social media were videos by EV community members, people actually enjoying the joyride that they were having on the Ola Electric. And I thought it was really funny and a clever strategy by the Ola Electric marketing team. Feedback from real EV owners is really important and it is much more valuable than so-called reviews by pollution vehicle media who have their own anti-EV agenda and are here just to spew out FUD, which is fear, uncertainty and doubt. Many of you have written to us about why Plugin India has not released a review video yet. Well, the simple answer is that we were not invited to the Ola Electric media event. We got our hands on the Ola S1 Pro last week. We only managed to do a 10 minute ride and Atulji and Kamlesh shared their views. If you have not seen that video, the link is in the description below. Also, Ola has delayed deliveries citing semiconductor chip supply issues, which is very strange because in September, CMO Varun Dubey had said that they are confident of semiconductor chip supplies. This he said on an interview to CNBC. The video is here. Obviously, there is a very apparent uh, uh, supply chain situation with these with these uh, semiconductor electronic child parts. And I think everybody is dealing with that. Um, you know, currently we have factored that in uh, to the delivery schedules and so customers should be able to get the scooters at the time when we are coming to The semiconductor shortage is real guys. We spoke to multiple companies in the EV industry and integrated chips are used in controller boards, BMSs. In some cases, there are tiny boards in motors too. And if these chips are in shortage, then the vendors who make the controllers and BMSs and other PCBs will face issues with production. Many EV startups that we personally know are facing problems and delays in deliveries because of this issue. Regarding Ola's message on the semiconductor shortage, I personally feel that this is a kind of a smoke screen. They are basically trying to buy some time because there are issues with the software and they need some time to sort those issues out. However, having said that, if they are able to deliver by December, that would be great. No problems there. But if it goes beyond that, there will be a serious erosion of trust to all these people who have booked the scooters and are loyal customers right now. While most of you who tested the Ola S1 Pro absolutely love the scooter, there are issues like unfinished software and throttle response cutting off, etc. But nevertheless, the Ola S1 and S1 Pro have the foundation to be an absolute game changer. We have witnessed this in the eyes of the people who have actually taken these test rides. And we believe that this will absolutely expose how disgustingly stupid and archaic petrol scooters are. Petrol scooters suck. And as I am recording, I have just found out that Suzuki has launched another pollution scooter in 2021. Yuck! Shame on these traditional auto OEMs. We call them the Big Ice Mafia. They only want you to keep paying more and more money at the petrol pumps and at their service centers. They won't launch EVs because they know they won't make that money. It's pathetic. But anyway, regarding the S1 and S1 Pro, we feel that other than the product, there are larger issues at Ola Electric regarding people and processes. 
There are four issues that the Plug in India team has observed by interacting with the EV community. This is the feedback from the EV community to the Ola Electric team. This is a biggie. Essentially, the problem is that any communication from Ola only comes via the Ola app or by a poor email support system. People actually need answers to their questions whenever they need them. Hey Ola, when you take money from your customers, ensure that you have a well-trained support staff who have answers to all manner of questions regarding that product. It could be regarding finances, it could be regarding specifications, it could be regarding delivery dates or any other questions that they might have. Your email support system sucks. People are getting impersonal, robotic and copy-paste replies to the queries that they're asking. People simply want to pick up a phone and talk to someone on the other end. They want some reassurance that the big company is with them. They want a personal or a human touch. We learned that Ola sends an email to customers, those who are ready to make the final payment and that email has a number to speak to Ola support. What about those people who have paid 20,450 rupees? Don't they deserve an answer? As of now, people are not getting answers to their queries regarding the Ola electric scooter and that is causing distrust among the members of the community. This has to be fixed as soon as possible. Customers need to be given a toll-free number which is specifically for the Ola electric scooter. The problem here is that Ola has taken money from people all over India. And this initial rupees 450 booking amount was welcomed by them and they even cheered and told the world how many bookings they got. But now the main pressure is coming from the major cities. That's where the major population is and this is a numbers game. And even though people have paid the other 20,000 rupees for booking their scooter, we feel that Ola is going to deliver first only in the major cities. So if you reside in a small town, and you have paid your 20,450 rupees to Ola already, then you have no hope of getting your scooter anytime soon. This is pissing off many EV community members. One EV owner even told us that Ola Electric is accepting payments from a large number of people essentially trying to create hype with booking numbers while the reality is that these large orders won't be fulfilled for months to come and this makes it an unethical business practice in my eyes. My response is that we have seen this before with Tesla. They took bookings and did not deliver their cars for three to four years. In fact, I have personally known friends who sitting in India booked a Tesla for a thousand dollars and now of course they have cancelled and yet the Model 3 is yet to show up in India. So while I don't feel that Ola customers will have to wait for three or four years, it will be much much sooner, but my friend makes a valid point. Just because Tesla does it, we need not do it. Here is what Ola Electric can do. If you cannot deliver the scooter in small towns or cities, even after four, five or six months, communicate that to your customers regularly by sharing updates on what is happening at Ola. Send an email or call the customer whenever you reach a production milestone or whenever you set up a local service center or assemble a team in a customer state. That way, the customer will know when there is progress happening locally and they won't be in the dark. Communication is the key and customers will feel taken care of. Why not start some forums moderated by a passionate team from Ola Electric itself? This is what Aether Energy did. Their forums are thriving and they put people on those forums that really do give a shit. They communicate and talk back. They even take design inputs from customers in those much publicized CEO community meetups. It's shocking that Ola Electric still does not have a well-built forum on their website. I was reading this article on the Ken and they seem to make the point that there is a bigger problem at Ola Electric regarding people and processes. I encourage everyone to read this article. I will put a link to it in the description below. Here are some points from the article that we'd like to share with you. A. We were literally shocked when we heard about the vehicle launch because most of the software modules weren't completely developed and tested. Lots of bugs were reported at initial testing itself. For example, the scooter has to detect the charger, whether it's a hypercharger or a normal charger and has to read its temperature. Then there are times when scooter misreads things. B. 
there are people who have not engineered the product from the testing stage supply chains have been asked to deliver the parts and quality team is forced to accept rejected parts to continue with deliveries there is a three way tug of war which is creating chaos see when people say a certain thing can't be done they are asked to leave which again adds to the attrition said multiple executives the company did try to tackle the problem by increasing the salary of employees significantly however this made matters worse people started lying to the top management about meeting deadlines in order to escape the sack so this does make for grim reading especially if you are a customer have paid the money or are waiting in line for deliveries now we are not very sure about the source of this article apparently the author spoke to ex employees and auto journalist now we know that both of these are very unreliable sources because obviously ex employees will have a vested interest in making sure that they do something which shows that company down and auto journalist have an anti ev agenda so do take this article with a pinch or a bag of salt but at the same time there is attrition there are reports of senior people quitting ola my take on this is that the corporate world is full of mercenaries there are people who will jump from job to job in search of the next pay hike with no thought or vision to what it is that they really want to do in life unfortunately we are seeing it here in the ev industry too these mercenaries see that companies like ola are very well funded and are going to be able to pay them fantastic salaries so they jump in say what they have to say and do what they have to do to keep their jobs so the good part for ola electric is that everybody is replaceable and india is blessed with a very large talent pool and there will be enough of opportunity seekers hike seekers and they will never be short of people who will come and get the job done but they will not have a love of evs they will not have a passionate inclination to do something to take the company to the next level the solution to this is finding people who are passionate about evs who knows you might unearth the next jb strobel or gwen shotwell or even johnny i at ola electric look at the ev community and you can find passionate people for this join plug in india's groups they will give back more than they take you need crazy mad passionate people for revolution not just corporate hike seekers ultimately the management of ola electric can't just keep throwing money at these people problems they will have to design better processes for their own people Ola did not show us many of the features of their software which were promised in the initial reveal video by Bhavish. So Kamlesh did take a test ride and spoke about this in our previous video. Software is a huge part of a well designed EV. In the Ola S1 Pro and the future Ola EVs there will be a tight integration between software and hardware. And in order for an EV to work reliably you need high quality software that gets the best out of the hardware. One example is Apple. Look at the quality of their software. They keep having new software updates, bug fixes and new features, upgrades to their operating system. This keeps happening month after month, year after year, release after release, ensuring that the underlying hardware works perfectly. That same piece of software works on multiple pieces of hardware, ensuring that at the end the customer user experience is the best it can possibly be. taking care of the hardware the different types of hardware the old and the new bridging the gaps this is what effective software does ola will need to build a very effective software development team it will have to match apple standards if there are bugs on a phone it's not a big deal but if there are bugs on a scooter while riding it could be life threatening ola needs to ensure that this will never happen that the customer always gets the best ride quality ultimately if ola electric does want to eat into the market share of existing ice auto manufacturers and they need to invest in a world class software development team and do everything in their power to keep these developers happy and performing finally the coming few months are going to be very interesting we love bhavish agarwal's vision his view to disrupt the petrol scooter mafia companies but the management will need to work on their processes to keep their people happy and retained we need ola to produce great products and we hope someone will share this with ola management what do you guys think do you have any suggestions that you'd like to carry to ola management 
please write in the comments below thank you for watching and we'll see you again next time